Hey guys and welcome back to Going to the Movies. Today we're getting extreme with a new series on the channel called Mapping Nostalgia. It's going to be the same exact format as all of our other videos on the channel, but it's going to focus a little bit more on the hidden gems from our childhood. And what better way to kick off the series than with the movie Airborne, it's such a classic. Despite all of its flaws, it still holds up for me. So today we're going to visit Wiley's house, the greenhouse, the double date locations, all the best highlights from Devil's Backbone and more. Filmmakers clearly thought that they were in Minneapolis when they were making this movie, but it was all in Cincinnati. It took place there, it was filmed there, so let's go. All right, guys, we're on the Kentucky side of the river. We're supposed to be in Cincinnati where Wiley Man lives, but his house is actually here in Newport, Kentucky, 711 Linden Avenue. It's that brick house right there. Weirdly, they never actually show the outside of the house except for when he's jumping off the porch. You get this weird angle of the, the brick porch. But other than that, you just have to use context clues, so I'll show you how I found it. When they are first picking Mitchell up from the airport and they arrive at the house, the car comes and parks along the street here. And you see all of these houses, which have a bunch of different colors now. At the time, it was like yellow, blue, red, yellow, red, blue. Now we've got a bunch of different colors, but these houses are very distinct in that shot. Look at the stones right here on this part of the wall. Still match up. You've got this part, this little piece, this one, and then the longer, lighter colored one at the end. Matches exactly to the stones when Mitchell jumps off of these stairs and goes out into the street over here. Right after he jumps off the porch, you get a shot of him skating into the street. Actually, this could be the montage. I can't remember if this is when he gets his skates from the mail or if this is the montage where he skates around town. But you can see four buildings. Now the trees are obscuring them. This is kind of the angle. So I'll show you that shot and then I'm gonna walk over there and tell you what matches up. So this house still red on the front. Back then it had a different color on the trim. It was more of a beige and now it's kind of a green color. You got that stained glass window right there on the living room window. And you've got this house that looks pretty similar. And then over here, the window is matching up this building on the right, which is now green instead of red. So last year when we came to visit the spots, it started downpouring on us right here. That's Wiley's house right there. But Whoever lives in this house saw us taking pictures and invited us to come stand up on the porch while the rain was pouring down, which kind of gave us that view when you see all the guys come and visit the house to uh, reconcile with Mitchell and ask him to join him on the Devil's Backbone race. It's not the same angle because that was all the way at the end of the street and I'll try to match it up as best I can, but it was cool to be up on the porch and see down all the porches lined up. Okay. So I'm down here at the end, and you can see down here on the sidewalk. It's kind of tough, but I'm going to hold it up and see if we can match the angle a little bit. Oh, God. So I don't know what you were seeing, but hopefully it kind of matches up. I know you wouldn't be able to see through the whole thing now because they've got the uh, stuff there on the porch blocking that view. One other thing to note about Wiley's house, the inside was not shot in this house. I had heard that before and then found this screenshot, which kind of confirms it. You can see a house through the window that does not match any of the houses in front of the exterior Wiley's house. All right, this is Western Hills High School, West Cincinnati, and this is where Mitchell Goosen and his cousin Wiley went to high school. So coming up to the front door, if you look through the window, you can see the reverse side of when they went in. Look at the arch windows above the doors. You can see those when they come into school on Mitchell's first day. Pretty awesome. A lot of fun scenes here, especially uh, Jack Black and Seth Green. They really shine here. Shout out to that casting director, by the way, for introducing the world to those guys. Love the school scene. No, I'm not sure if they actually filmed the classroom scene in this building because if you look out of the windows of that scene, you see red brick in this building 
is all yellow and brownish colored. And when Mitchell gets thrown out the window, you can also see that brick. There's also a shot where he's getting up. You can see a goal post in the background. Now there is a football field across the street. So if it was filmed in here, it was probably on this side of the building, but I don't think it was. There's nothing around this building but that red brick. In real life, this is actually where Pete Rose went to high school as well. We're now the farthest from the center of Cincinnati that we're gonna get for airborne locations. This is Hamilton, Ohio, north of Cincinnati, and this parking lot, you may not recognize, it's where they shot all the hockey scenes. And I'm not talking about the roller hockey scenes. This is where the ice rink was, where uh, Mitchell meets Nikki. He goes into the game and he scores for the wrong team and then he gets knocked out at the end. So let's go look at this parking lot a little bit and see any clues that remain that there was a hockey rink here. It's now additional parking as they painted lines and added these uh, light posts. But originally the parking lot stopped at this line and then there was that hangar like structure going over and check out the grooves. Still the same shape as a hockey rink so I'm guessing these would have held the boards. And I was able to find this from a local Cincinnati guy. Had pictures from 2007 when the uh, structure was still standing. His name is Ronnie Salerno. He's a photographer and a blogger and a writer. So that's how I found it. This is Crone Conservatory, a greenhouse here in Cincinnati, and you'll recognize it once we line up the angles as the uh, pre-date with Nikki and Mitchell. They run into each other and they decide to walk through here. Let's go see what we can see. So we get about this spot where Nikki and Mitchell are talking to each other. And you see the waterfall in the background. There's a bigger plant on the left side. So we'll continue through and see everything else. What is this? I can't remember the plant's name. Cleopatra's earrings, is that one? The waterfall, still here. A different bridge, but still in the same place. And then here's this rock tunnel that they go under. So we're going to keep following Virginia through. You see this angle as he skates through it, though it's not as dark. And then he comes out here. This is the point of view while he's skating laps around the area. So they're standing here looking at these plants. And she turns back. She doesn't know where he went. And he comes out from here on the skate and flies off in this direction. All right, Virginia's standing in for Mitchell Goosen, where he goes into the cave and he puts his skates on. Nikki didn't know where he went. But look at the rock formations on the side here. One, two, three, that all matches with the rock behind it. Pretty awesome how they've kept everything the same here. And here she comes, no skates on though. So she's only gonna go slowly. When Mitchell's skating through, he comes up these stairs comes across here and then goes back down these stairs for another lap. And look at the floor, it's still exactly the same as when they filmed in 1993. So awesome. So after his second lap around, he goes into this side room and just skates a lap around this one. And it's all just plants in here, but still feels exactly the same. So I'll quickly take a lap around as he did. Once he comes out here, he goes into what's called the desert room, which is closed off right now because that is the butterfly exhibit that they do every year. We are going to go through there, but I don't know if we'll be able to match the angle since those doors seem to be closed. It always looks a little bit different in that room because they had different exhibits. I think it was, uh, I don't know, cactus or something going on last time we came a year ago. But when you come 
this area and the area to the left of it if you're facing that section. Pretty much the same. Okay, we're inside of the uh, butterfly exhibit right now. and This is sort of the angle you get when they end the skate scene. He comes and jumps through a gazebo here and meets back up with Nikki. And that's when they leave. If it's possible to be iconic and obscure at the same time, this shot right here where Mitchell's looking at the building, the vines were making it look like an upside down heart. And he does this. That's iconic obscurity. There was a ramp right here and the guy on the BMX bike jumps up onto this ledge, followed by Mitchell Goosen. You see these two houses in the background. And then they continue along the wall, and then he grinds down that rail and continues down the sidewalk. Mitchell Goosen jumps over some kids sitting right here as he's kind of collecting them hot rod style as he skates through the streets. You can see those diamond windows still there, the doors all the same. Look at this building here out behind the trees. I think that's a church back there. This building still the same, different color, telephone pole still in the same spot, and in the stairs, he jumps over them. The kids sitting right here say, we gotta follow that guy. He knows how to skate. And they go off in this direction, down the street. All right, we're out here under the highway. Don't even know where we are specifically in Cincinnati, but I'll put the uh, coordinates. And this is where the half pipe once stood. Right here, you can match this one up, was directly in the middle. You see those signs and those signs. New ones now, but telling us the same thing as the ones that were there when they filmed. Unfortunately, this growth is all in the way. I'm not sure if you can see that building still in the background because there's so many new buildings here in Cincinnati, but this is where the half pipe scene was. And for the final part of that montage, they approach the top of the stairs here and Mitchell Goosen goes down on his inline skates, just absolutely shredding the gnar the entire way down. I don't think you can capture it really on film, but when you're here walking up and down these stairs, you really realize how insane it was, even for the uh, stand-in to be doing tricks down this steep staircase. He jumps every single stair set onto the flat part, doing a trick off of each one. Nuts. And here's where the montage ends, and Mitchell waves up to us from down at the bottom of the stairs. Pretty easy location to find. You see the Dorsey Street sign in uh, the shot from the movie. New signs now, but still Dorsey Street. Got the telephone pole and the uh, manhole covers and the railing still matches. Pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, so when they go on the double date, Mitchell and Nikki, with uh, the girl whose name I forget, and Seth Green, Wiley, they come out to one of these things as they're walking along the river across from the Cincinnati skyline, which is over there. So I'm actually in Kentucky right now, filming Ohio. And it looks like they're in one of these things. They're walking along a rail. But the angle matches more of what's over here if you compare this section of the bridge and this building here with the bite taken out of the top right where it slants there. That building there was not there when they filmed the movie. I know that they have redone this riverfront on this side a couple of times, so it's possible there was one over here at some point. Right now it's just a sidewalk, some grass, and then the uh, flood wall here. But I do think I have the angle right, so it just doesn't match up if you're on that thing over there. No mention of rollerblades out here, so come out and shred. Nice breeze. Really great view of Cincinnati from over here. Okay, so we're now in Pompilio's on the Kentucky side, and this is the restaurant where they have the double date. 
They were eating right about here. There was a booth here at the time. And you could see this door. You can see that circular thing right there. These windows and then this pattern right above Mitchell's head. Still exactly the same, just painted a different color scheme. And then they are disturbed by the preps who come in. And Blaine comes and grabs Wiley's date. And I think her name was Gloria in the movie. He tries to force her to dance right here. And then the mean guys from their own school come in and break up everything. And Mitchell says, hey, I'm only here for a few more weeks anyways, and then I'm out of here. And Nikki doesn't like that. So she goes with those guys. They leave out this way, which is no longer the normal entry and exit from Pompilio's. But I'll go over here to show you the angle. And we see them leaving from here. And you can see the telephone in the background, which is also in Rain Man. So let's go see the sign where they all signed it. So again, here's where they were eating. And if you come in this direction, to this little uh, nook here, above it is the Pompilio's Welcome to Airborne cast and crew sign, which is signed by a bunch of the cast and crew. I wonder who all is on here. So here's some footage inside of the bathroom Virginia grabbed while we were there. This is uh, where they were freshening up right towards the beginning of the date. All right, so here's the outside of Pompilio as we see it as Mitchell is leaving, heading to the car where Wiley is. Everyone's mad at Mitchell now because he says he's gonna, uh oh, got a skateboarder over here. But um, <laughs> get some inline skates, dude. Um, everyone's mad at him, including Wiley because he's, he's happy about fact that he's gonna be leaving in a couple weeks and, and Wiley just was wondering why he didn't stick up for himself because you know Mitchell's a pacifist so he walks over in this direction you can see the corner of Pompilio's this building or this part of the building is Colonel Pomp's tavern named after Pompilio's and then you see this building off in the background as well look at the awning All right, here's the parking lot where they were playing roller hockey. It's right by where the half pipe was from that montage. But there's a few clues to give us the location here. You got the water tower, which you can see behind Mitchell Goosen's head as he skates over. And then the lettering here, Ohio serve. You see that back there. And this angle where he's setting up before play starts. Let me see if I can match this up perfect. It's about, mm, kind of like this, about that much space between the buildings. The one on the right showed up as higher and then you can see that thing sticking out just like it was in 1993. Let's match that up. And he comes over here, pulls Blaine's pants down. Now Blaine was like the bully of the bullies. Bad guys coming from all directions in this movie. But this is how Mitchell gains favor with his classmate bad guys and it's because he pulls down the pants of the prep bad guys. And everyone is just laughing hysterically all out here parked in this parking lot. And Mitchell runs off and skates up that bridge and away. Now, just at the beginning of that shot for a split second, you can see the end of this gray building here. It was a different color at the time. And then he goes up the bridge, which has also been redesigned. That all was filmed right here. Hey man, check it out, man. This is the story been challenged by the preps to a little skating race. Where's the race? Devil's Backbone. What's Devil's Backbone? Oh yeah, it's only the most dangerous hill in the whole town. Geez, the last guy who even tried to walk down that hill, he just got so messed up, he forgot who he was. I saw him, he pins in his head and his, ugh. What are you saying, Andy? He's the last guy who even tried to walk down that hill, he just got so messed up, he forgot who he was. I saw him, he pins in his head and his, ugh. So Devil's Backbone is the big final race at the end of the movie and in my opinion the pinnacle of extreme 90s movies final races. This is the shot we get right as they start the race. You can see all that 
road and grass in the background as they begin the descent to the bottom of Devil's Backbone. But this is where it all began. Started somewhere around here where she told them to go. And there's another angle from below. I'm gonna see if I can match up. Here is kind of the view we get when they show the opposite side from down the hill looking up. And I've gotta sort of match the angle and then get out because you cannot see over the crest either direction. And this street's a lot busier than it seems like it would be if you look on uh, Google Maps or if you're just kind of basing it off the movie. And we begin the long zigzagging trail across the river between Kentucky and Ohio. You remember some guys wrecked towards the beginning of the race. A guy flew up onto the porch and slid across on his stomach. The three old guys lift their feet up as he slides across. The house number obviously still matches. I'll go over there in the grass patch. This intersection is crazy. Look at all these stop signs. There's cars coming from everywhere. There's another one coming there. So I'm gonna go walk into this grass patch really fast just to get somewhat of a similar angle. I don't wanna go up on their uh, property or anything, but there it is. 4509, that's the porch. Let me get a quick zoom here. And I believe this is also the spot where Jack Black wipes out. I think uh, it was his stunt double coming down across this way, jumps over the grass patch. And then it wouldn't be a 90s movie without a shot to the crotch. So he runs into a tree somewhere off this. I forgot to mention uh, Devil's Backbone. They pulled a Rocky with it. It's filmed all over different parts of Cincinnati and just across the river in Kentucky. So I'm going to try to show you guys a map graphic of all the spots that we hit so you can just see how spread out it was and how nuts it would be if they actually raced the entire thing. It's not one continuous decline down to the uh, waterfront. Now you guys remember this spot from Devil's Backbone, they come down, they curve around this way. From over there, you get a shot pointing in our direction. They come down the hill, they come around here. One guy slides up and falls right at the front of a car that was parked there on the sidewalk. This is one of those spots from Devil's Backbone that definitely stands out in my memory. So it's cool to see this building. Looks like they may be fixing it up. Let's go to the next spot. So right up there, that intersection where that stop sign and where that cop car is coming down is where the cars slam on brakes and they have to inch through as they're skating down the hill and they come down in this direction and they cross this bridge. So here's a shot from the bridge where the first group of guys jump and you can see the railing here, this wall here, followed by the railing, still matches up today. That white house just right there also was there. The one behind it is new. And then of course, later Mitchell jumps the car right here as they pull him up from the other side. And then the car is coming in this direction. He has to jump over it. Now I was looking for this location last year for a long time and I could not find it. So I just gave up. But I posted a TikTok of the pictures we took last year, a few weeks ago, and someone uh, commented that they remembered them filming Airborne on his street that he grew up on. And it was this bridge scene. One I'd been looking for for a long time. If I hadn't posted that TikTok, I never would have found this bridge. So shout out to that guy. Go follow him on TikTok. And let's head to the next part of Devil's Backbone. All right, so the skaters, they come down here, across some busy traffic, and then that thing, that thing is so memorable to me. This pedestrian bridge that goes over the highway, and they skate through it. Let's go in there and see what it looks like today. Okay, man, this thing just looks cool in the movie, but in real life, it is so scary to be walking over this track and you know there's no supports under this thing. So this is what we see when he's skating down. Let me get a lower angle. We see him skate down this way and you can see that building right there in the shot. Some of those buildings up there on the hill, that's Mount Adams neighborhood, are visible in the background. 
the trees cover up a lot now. And so they cross over the highway here and then head down these stairs. A lot of them run down the stairs. Of course, Mitchell's gonna jump down because he's got the skills. All right, so he comes through. He jumps down the stairs from about this angle. But then when he's down here, he kind of slides up in the corner here and then heads off in that direction. This bridge is different than the way it was in the movie. The other one still matches up. This one has been changed a bit. And can I get it a little bit? Devil's backbone, people. What an amazing part of a movie that has no business being as good as it is. Despite people, some people saying that it's bad. They're just wrong. Okay, so they come down this direction and the finale of the movie and Devil's Backbone is right here. You recognize this building? Still the same and the movie finished right here. Everyone uh, lived happily ever after. Now you might be wondering, why did I not show the area where he jumps off the ledge? And that's because, look at this stadium in the background of that shot. I think maybe here is the ledge he jumped off and maybe here's the parking garage part that they were in right before they got to the end of the race. Well, look at the stadium now. Yeah, so there's been a lot of development to the riverfront, especially since the movie was filmed and a lot looks different, but fortunately we still have this building to show us where the end of Devil's Backbone was. All right guys, that's gonna do it for another Filming Locations video. Let me know what you think about these uh, a little bit more obscure nostalgia locations. Let me know what movies you'd like me to hit. I've got a couple more that I know I can do really quickly, so I'm looking forward to putting those up. Airborne though, I just had to, I just had to come do this one. Whether I was starting a new series or not, I love this movie so much. I watched it probably hundreds of times as a kid. I recorded it on a VHS one day. I brought it to my grandma's house and I showed it to her and I was like, Grandma, you gotta see this awesome movie. And she watched it. She was like, Ryan, this is a really stupid movie. But I loved it. And so it was such a great experience seeing everything today. I hope you liked it too. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.